This podcast is going to cover how to set up authentication keys uh, to use with SSH. With SSH, so far we logged in with a password. Uh, we can set up authentication keys, which uses a public key, private key pair uh, to prove your authentic, your uh, prove you are who you say you are to the server. Uh, the client uses the private key. The server has the public key. They exchange some information, and then the server says, "Hey, that guy has a private key that matches up with my public key." So that must be the right person for that. So uh, if you wanted to create a public key, private key pair, you run the command ssh-keygen-trsa. We can run this command and do it locally. Uh, there's some tools you can use on Windows to do it locally, but I found that the easiest way for everybody to say straight in this class is for us to generate the keys on the server and copy them down to the a client machine. So first thing I'm going to do is SSH up to CNT serve. Alright, once I get to CNT serve and get logged in, if I remember my password, I'm going to run the same command I just showed you, SSH-keygen-trsa. It's going to like, enter the file in which you wish to save the key file. It's not exactly what it says, but that's what it meant. We're going to keep it in the default location, id underscore rsa. This is your private key. And it says, it created the directory.ssh for us. It says, enter a passphrase. Okay, do you want to enter a passphrase? Well, first, let me tell you what the passphrase does. The passphrase is used to encrypt your private key. I'm going to enter a passphrase. Right, so I entered a passphrase. I recommend you enter a passphrase. Make sure you enter it twice. I might have screwed it up the first time. Nope, that worked. Shows you some random art. That's cool. Whatever. So now if we do ls.ssh, we have two files in there. So we're going to use the cd command to change directory into the .ssh uh, directory. I know this is early on in the semester, so just follow along with the commands without getting too stressed about what they're doing. And we need to have the id underscore rsa.pub that's our private, our public key. We need to have that in the file called authorized keys. So I'm going to move id underscore rsa dot pub into authorized keys. All right, now I'm going to do a ls dash l to look at the permissions because the permissions need to be tight -er than normal so that nobody else has access to our key. So I'm going to run a command to remove this read permission from the other users. We'll learn about permissions later, but essentially this first group apply to the owner, those apply to the group, those three apply to other. We're gonna remove, we're gonna remove other, group other minus read. That's the uh, symbolic way you can do that. Authorize keys. And I typed the wrong command, which is always awesome to do when you're making a podcast. All right, so now if I do ls-l again, I have read write on the authorized keys by the owner, user only, and I also want to look at the permissions of the directory. I can do ls-ld to show me the directory permissions, and it is I am the only one that has permissions to the directory, so that's good. So now I have a public key on my remote system. I need to get the private key to my local system, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to exit. I'm going to go back to the local system. I'm going to cd into the .ssh directory. Right, and I'm going to use the SCP command to copy my ID underscore RSA, my ID underscore RSA file to the local directory. So I'm going to use secure copy SCP. I'm going to tell it what I want to copy. Right. Well, for SCP, I need to tell it the remote system in this case and the username. So in this case, I want to copy as RBE two 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 at CNT serve dot hack dot edu. I'm going to put a colon, and I want to get the dot SSH slash id underscore rsa again you might be confused as heck right now that's cool just copy the command just type the command to get your file because that's the point of this process to get the file we're going to cover this stuff later and then i want to tell it to copy it to the current directory so the dot is a special character in unix that means linux unix and linux it means many 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 things one of the things it means is the current directory so i'm going to do run this command it's going to ask me for my password I didn't type my password, so that's not going to work. All right, so now I'll copy the file. So now if I do a ls, I have the id underscore rsa file. So now the magic thing is, 
first off, when I connected, you noted it asked me for the password. Well, now when I connect, it's going to ask me for my passphrase. See, passphrase. This is what I entered on the key. I entered a passphrase on the key so that uh, my key is protected. So in theory, if somebody stole my key and there was no passphrase, they could log in as me onto the remote system. But since there's a passphrase, you have to have the passphrase to decrypt the key in order to use it. So that's what we're going to do uh, for now. Um, a couple of notes. If you named your key something other than ID underscore RSA, I told you not to do that. I told you to keep the default name. But say for some reason, where am I at? Say for some reason you named your key, you know, I don't know, key. Right, so now I do not have an ID underscore RSA file. That's one of the files SSH looks for by default. This is something you're probably going to do. I just screwed that up. Why did I screw that up? I did that on CNT server, not on my local system. Right, so now I'm back on my local system. I'm going to do it again. So now say I am connected uh, to my local, I'm on my local system. I want SSH by default. SSH looks for ID underscore RSA and probably some other different types of key files. So now if I try, it asks for my password again because it could not find my key. Password, passphrase, not the same thing, right? If you did that, your options are A, rename the file to be the right thing, or you can use a dash lowercase i to specify the key and tell it where the key is. And now it asks me for my passphrase again, right? I just happen to be in the .ssh directory, or not. Oh, I guess it looks in the .ssh directory. Oh, I'm on CNT server again. Yeah, I'm being so so obstinate today. I was in the .ssh directory, right? If you try that same command and you're not in the same directory as the key, it's like, oh, hey, I couldn't find your key. I'm so confused. You have to put the path to the key. So in this case, it's in .ssh slash key. I'm doing all these things because these are errors you guys are going to make, and I'm trying to, to avoid them before you make them. So um, if you put everything in the right place, uh, you shouldn't have to do this. All right, and for fun, I'm going to go back and change my key back to the right thing. Right, and now if I do the whole SSH without specifying the key, it should work and ask for my passphrase. So this assignment for module one is to do this. How do you know if it works? Well, if it asks for your passphrase and you get logged in, then it worked. If it's asking for your password, uh, then it didn't work. All right, so that is pretty much the same process for Linux and Mac from the shell. So on my Mac, I have a .ssh directory somewhere, .ssh, and in my .ssh directory, I have some keys, id underscore rsa, so that's why when I do ssh-l, my username, it logs me in without asking for my password. Uh, my Mac pops up a window every now and then and asks for my passphrase, but it, it, re it remembers that for me, so that key does actually have a passphrase on it. So say you're using Windows. What do you do if you're using Windows? Well, if you're using Windows, depends on what you're using. I figured out what this thing is. It's a magnifier. So if I hold it over, you can see like bigger. So I decided I would like, hey, that looks pretty cool. So maybe you can see better. So um, if you're using Windows and you're using MOBA X term, I can't see this at all. I don't like this magnifier. I need this window down. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Go away, magnifier. Oh, hey, it's over there. That, that works out, too. Let me make it bigger over here. Out of the way. So, if you are connecting using OBA X term, all right, you want to log in. All right. So I'll connect. It should ask me for my password. Password, right? Yes. 
No, you can save your password. Don't save. I don't care. It depends on if you trust people who can use your computer. I'll say no for now. Right? And then once you're connected, you can be super lame and drag your key down. Oh, look how lame I am. All right, once you get your key locally, I should have a key on my desktop somewhere. There it is. Once you get your key down, you can then go edit your, your settings or start a new session. I'll start a new one for now. All right, remote host cnt serve.hack. Edu. Spell username. And then there's some advanced settings. Use private key. Come over here, click this guy to browse for the file. It's on my desktop. It's called key. Let's see if this works. Hopefully, it should ask me for my passphrase. Hey, look at that passphrase. So that's by far the easiest way to use keys with Windows. If you decided earlier you're using PuTTY and you're kind of stubborn, well then PuTTY is quite a bit more complex to use. To use PuTTY to get your, your, your uh, key file down, you also need to get either PSCP or PFTP. I'll do it both ways. PSC, PSCP, the command works just like SCP on Linux. Once you download it, you need to change directories to wherever you download it to. I'm in the, the downloads directory, so pscp.exe. I want to do it as rbe2222 at cntserve.hack.edu. And I want to get uh, the file. I need a colon and then the file name, which in this case is going to be .ssh slash key. Remember, I changed the name of my file because I'm not very smart. Uh, you want to leave your file named ID underscore RSA. So you'll be typing ID underscore RSA. And I want a dot to tell it to put it in the current directory. I do that. It's going to ask me for my password. So now I have my key in the password. Uh, yeah, my key in the password. My key in my downloads directory. Another thing you could do if you like completely cannot manage the PSCP process. There's PSFTP, which uses the SSH subsystem to give you an, SC, an FTP like client, right? So I'll run this, PSFTP, cntserve.hag.edu. I realize that most of you guys probably aren't old enough to have ever used FTP, but if by some chance you have used FTP and are more familiar with the syntax, uh, it asks me for my password. Right, and now I can use uh, FTP commands to get the file. So I want a CD and the .ssh. You can do ls to look at uh, stuff, and I will see that I have a file called key. So I'm going to do the command get key. It's going to download it. Hey, remote, local, it got it. So now I have my key using that way. There are also any number of lame GUI tools you can use to... Uh, copy the file over, but if you're going to use a lame GUI tool, you might as well just go ahead and, and use MOBA Xterm. Um, once you have the, the uh, I wonder if I have putty gen. Yeah. Once you have the key, for putty you need to convert it into a putty format. So we're going to load the key. We're going to go to downloads. We're going to type in key because I know that's what it's called and I don't feel like looking for it. Oh, no. Yeah, whatever. It has a passphrase, so it's going to ask me for my passphrase. All right. It imported my key. So now it even says on here, to use this key with PuTTY, you need to use save private key, key command to put it in PuTTY's own format. All right. So I'll do save private key. All right. I'm going to put it on my desktop or not and eh, whatever oh, it says, oh there it is desktop I'm gonna call it uh, putty dash key dash 20 yeah, that's good putty dash key I'm gonna save it All right so now I have this putty key dash ppk file so now if I open putty 
I can open my save session, click on that, do load. I can go over here to SSH auth and I can say, hey, private key for authentication. You guys see that? Private key for authentication. I can pick that PPK file I just created, which should be on my desktop. And hey, what do I call it? Oh, putty key.ppk. So now if I connect, it uh the server refused our key. That's so uncool. That's for my password. Why did the server refuse my key? Yeah, so let's go to our event log and see what it says. Huh. Server refused our key. That's very uncool. Um, oh, I know why. Because that was the wrong usernames. So see, I uh, opened my session from before as RBE000. So that's why the server refused my key. Uh, I love it when I can figure things out without having to look too foolish. So I'm going to load this guy again. I'm going to go back down here, I'm gonna specify my key file. But you're like, wait, Rich, didn't you do that a minute ago? Yeah, I did do that, but I forgot to save. It's on my desktop. I forgot to save the session. So that's why I got to do it again. So now I'm going to go up here to wherever my username was. And now it's asking me for my passphrase. So I'll put my passphrase. And there you go. And that concludes my demonstration of how SSH fails if your key does not match. I did that on purpose. I forgot to tell you guys that. I was just acting confused. So anyway, I've shown you how to use keys uh, for Linux and Mac. I've shown you how to use keys with Mobile X term, and I've showed you how to use keys with Putty. Uh, between, all, between the three of those uh, methods, hopefully you can manage to get it working.